Good evening. Hearty welcome to our monthly get-together, which I must say has become an occasion to which I look forward to, where we can pause for a moment and look at the things that happened in the few days that have gone by, and also focus on that which is to come. I dare say we don't have to look far back into the month of June, because Pentecost, with our chief apostle in Vienna, of which we all could be a part of, was so great. As the district apostles and the district apostle helpers across the world, we could spend a few days in meetings with our chief apostle, and we could discuss many things that pertains to the future of the church, that which we have discussed, you will hear much of in the coming days and months which will take our church forward into a beautiful and blessed time. But the Pentecost service was, I'm convinced for many, a renewal of our own Pentecost. That the gift of the Spirit needs to be revived in us. And that was the message of our chief apostle. We don't want to forget that. He said, let's go out and find those. Go and get our youth, get them back. Our families, get them back. And let their commitment to our God be renewed. That we all have something to do. That this Pentecost, let it be the greatest for all of us. In the sense of the changes that it will bring about in our life and in the way we react towards our neighbor. For that is the nature of Christ, because the gift of the Holy Spirit is none other than the Spirit of Jesus that needs to be active and to work within us. My hope is that this season of Pentecost may be with us until next Pentecost, when we can look back with joy and to see the development within ourselves and also within our church. Here in the Cape, when I came back from Vienna, we just experienced a devastating storm which left many people with problems that they never had before the storm. Many of the homeless had to suffer much. And soon after that, we had the fires all along the garden route, right up to the Eastern Cape. And many people suffered much. We pray for them all the time and trust that their lives may get back to normal as soon as possible. But I want to take the opportunity to thank all, among them our brethren, who made themselves available, who took of their possessions and shared it with those who did not have, who went out of their way and maybe had much discomfort to help their neighbor. And that's beautiful. It was beautiful to behold. On the one hand, the tragedy is not so great and you don't wish it upon anyone. But then to see the beauty of human beings loving their neighbor and doing good. And let us take that lesson from all and let us find every opportunity to do good. Let's not wait for a disaster, for right around the corner, right next door to me, right next, next to me in the desk at school is someone in need. Come, let's together help to alleviate the needs of others. And, show, and so allow the love of God to be seen in us as we love our neighbors. In the past month, we also experienced a long weekend, which was the 16th of June on the, fr on the Friday. And I was fortunate to attend one or two of the youth activities. And I must say, it was great and it was vibrant. I'm happy to see the activity of our young people and the congregations where they could get together and spend the day in fellowship with each other. It is important that being together 
is never a burden for us. And okay, when new apostolics get together, there's always much to eat. And I must say, the 16th of June pass was no exception. There was so much to eat and so much fun that was had by all. And I thank all who were part to organize these events. I know it takes a lot of work, but I want to say to you all that it's worth it because many could benefit greatly by it. And now we have the month of July ahead of us. And tomorrow we celebrate the day of the departed, where we pray like we pray for all mankind, that they can have access to salvation. And Jesus made it clear. He says, you need to be born, reborn of water and the spirit. You need to be baptized and sealed. He didn't specify that you must have a body for this to take place. And so tomorrow, as we have prepared ourselves, we invite many to come to the altar where they will receive the gifts needed for preparing them as the bride of Christ to be with him forever. And we must be and we must understand that we don't need, I've said before, we don't need any gimmicks. You know, here and there we do some things that we want to remember our loved ones from yonder world. I remind you, we remember them every Sunday where they are served with the blessed sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. So the day of the departed is dedicated to those who want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, to bow before him and realize he is our savior. And so the day is dedicated not particularly to our loved ones, but to the many who accept the message of salvation in yonder world, that they too can come, because that's the ultimate love for our neighbor. The ultimate love is, I want you to have salvation just as I have salvation. I want you to be with Jesus forever, just as I have the opportunity to be with him forever. And this is what we want to share. So together with all the apostles and God's servants, I wish you all a blessed preparation and a beautiful feast for the service for the departed. May you experience much love, much joy and much blessing in the various congregations where we all gather. I will be in Polokwane and I look forward to uniting with you from there. And I need to remind you all and our rectors and leaders in particular that as we celebrate the great feast of the departed, remember, Monday evening after departed service is dedicated to time with your family. Spend time with them. And all the servants, don't go out to visit other families. Visit your own family and spend time together for that's important. That when we are able to love those whom we don't see and pray for them, Let's not come short to love those who are with us always. They live in the same house. We eat out of the same plate at home. Take time and ensure that your quality of life is good and blessed. And then in July, I travel a little bit. I've been fortunate and blessed to be invited with our chief apostle to Lubumbashi, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I look forward to these encounters for they are spiritually strengthening, which we all need. That these days with him, I look forward to it. Remember us on our travels always, that we are able to go there and return back safely. And then we, I had an opportunity to speak with our chief apostle when we were in Vienna and we spoke about his visit to us in October this year. And I can tell you that he's excited and he's looking forward to being with us with the divine service on the 15th from the, of October from the congregation of Claremont. And then also on the Tuesday evening, a divine service in the George area. He's looking forward to it. And we prepare our hearts so that we have the maximum blessing and that all our plans can receive the blessing of our God.
This speed, it also brings about a nice time for our children, for they are on school holidays. And I must say, when I was a child, that was kind of the best time of the school years, with the school holidays. And enjoy, especially for those who worked hard. And I appeal especially to the parents, please ensure that your children are safe, that they are in good hands, that you know the people with whom you leave them. For we want to avert any tragedies to befall our, our young ones. For the evil in our time has reached great heights. So let's not tempt the evil out there. Let's make provision and ensure that our children are secure. I wish you well in the days of winter that's ahead of us. Please take care, keep warm and enjoy the time ahead of us. I look forward to meeting with you again next month.